and gentlemen, good morning to you all. I want you guys to, good morning. See what's going on here. Let's see, do we have our audio? I think we should. Audio, audio, audio. Let's double check. Okay, audio. Yeah, our audio is up and running. Mm. Anyway. Okay, so let's check Canvas, ladies and gentlemen. Now, uh, when do you guys have your first test? Do you guys know? It's Monday next week, and... What I put up online already for you is your test one study guide. Now, this is all tentative, meaning it can change. And, of course, if it does change, I'll let you know. Okay, so I put your study guide here up online. Um, you know, yesterday, maybe this morning, don't remember. So that's going to be for next week. So I'll let you guys know there's some things we got to talk about on it. But um, it's already here, so you might see some things that look very familiar to you. And that's the idea. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we do have to do some more studying. It's just a guide. Your actual test will be much shorter, but it is already online for you guys. So I do want to let you guys know about that. And, um, you know, let's, let's take a look at what we'll need to know for that test as well. Okay, so you do have your study guide. It's, it's online for you. And ladies and gentlemen, I oh, don't know what that is. There we go, okay. Now, what I wanna work on today is very similar to what you already have. And what I'm gonna say is to you, what if we take our ray? Okay, let's take the ray now right in here, and this time we rotate it in what direction? Clockwise direction instead. So we start at the initial position, and we rotate it clockwise. What do you think happens when we do that? Do you guys know? So in other words, if we rotate the central angle theta now, Clockwise, do you guys know what that really means? It means your angle is actually what? Negative. So theta is a negative angle. So clockwise rotation now means theta is what? Negative. Okay. All right. So we want to remember this idea. So if theta is negative, we're going to have to define our, our trig functions. Remember, now we have cosine of, I'm going to put a minus theta, sine of a minus theta, and tangent of a minus theta. Because when I say theta is negative, we're going to, we're going to look at it this way. All right, you guys okay with that? Now it has the same definition. What do I mean by that? you guys know? What was your definition of cosine with your circular function definition? Do you guys remember? Which coordinate was it? The x coordinate. Good. What about sine? Good. What about tangent? It's y over x. Is that true? And of course we know we always put down okay x can't be zero because Fine, our denominator can never be undefined. So let's go back and take a look at this here. Okay. So if I rotate a negative angle theta here, like if I rotate over here, do you guys know what quadrant are you in? Quadrant four, right? You see that terminal point we've been working with right here, that terminal point? So the x-coordinate stays the same, doesn't it? But the y-coordinate is not. What's the y-coordinate now? Isn't that negative? So what I'm saying is, right in here, that negative angle theta here has the same x-coordinate for the terminal point, but you have minus y for the what? For the y-coordinate. Let's put this kind of like, like an arc with an arrow there. So what that means is, 
the x coordinate's the same, we put a negative for the y coordinate and the negative for the y coordinate, okay? All right, you guys okay with that? Easy peasy. Now it gets a little bit better. We already know what the x coordinate represented prior. X doesn't change. There's no change in the x coordinate. So what I want to say to you guys is because there's no change in the x coordinate, we could just say that's the same as cosine of what? Of theta. Because it's because it's the same as before. It didn't change. Okay, and then now you might say, what about this minus y? Well, we can think of it this way. We can think of minus y as negative 1 times y. And what was the definition of y before? Isn't that sine theta? So I can replace that y variable with what it was defined with the positive angle. And so now I get, ladies and gentlemen, this relationship here. that sine of minus theta, you can pull the negative sign out. It's the same as sine theta, but it's a negative sign is pulled outside. Over here for cosine, what you notice is there's no change here. So you might say, oh, there's no change in cosine. It's the same. So for cosine of any negative angle, it's the same as cosine. For sine of a negative angle, it's minus sine. Now you might say, what about tangent? Well, tangent is very similar to sine in the sense that we can write it this way. We can say that this is equal to negative 1 times y over x. And we know what y over x was already. y over x is going to be tangent. which means that's minus tangent. So, ladies and gentlemen, for a negative angle and tangent, that negative sign comes out. So, here's the real summary here, ladies and gentlemen. We summarize it this way. That cosine of a negative angle is the same as cosine. Sine of a negative angle just pull out the negative sign, and then it's going to be minus sine theta. That leaves us with tangent of a negative angle going to be the same as the sine situation. Just pull out the negative sign. So I want you guys to see this very, very, very important property here because we're going to be using this. This is what we use for what we call what? Negative angles. So if you know what to do with the positive angles, you just use these properties for the negative angles. All right, that's it. And it comes with just the idea of rotating in a negative direction, meaning a clockwise direction right in here. And just using the definition here of this terminal point with the x and the minus y coordinate value. So it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So, for example, you might say, well, what are some examples? Well, determine. Let's see some examples, right? Sine of maybe negative 45 degrees. Cosine of negative 30 degrees, how about tangent of negative 60 degrees? Just to kind of start this off, right? See, this is easy peasy. So I'm going to bring in our picture. Let's see. It's over here. I guess I'm bringing in this one. Yeah. Nope, that's not it. Where was it at?
guess I go back here, bring this one in, just copy. Just bring it down. All right, let's find sine of negative 45 degrees, okay? So how do we rotate this if it has a negative angle? Do you guys know? We rotate it how? Negative 45 degrees. Now, it looks like we're going to have to use our brain here a little this morning here. Okay? If I rotate this 45 degrees, where is this? Anybody know? Is it at 315? I wonder what that even means. We don't even know what that means. So I'm going to rotate this here 45 degrees, and it's a negative rotation now, right? Now, you might say, how, how do we find that out? Well, because if you guys already notice here that one full rotation is 360. Is that true? So if you said, did you take... 360 degrees and subtract that 45. I did, and I got 300 and what? 15 degrees here. So this is where we're at, 315. Okay, you guys okay with that? So which one are we looking for? We're looking for what? Sine, and sine is, oh, sine of negative 45? What should we write down? Let's write down that property. Sine of negative 45 degrees is minus sine of what? Positive 45 degrees. So if I already know what that is, right, what's sine of, uh, of positive 45 degrees? You might say, why are you doing that when we're already looking at the, we could look at the x coordinate right here. I want to prove it to you guys. Remember this, this is the terminal point, and so your x-coordinate is here, your y-coordinate's there. What is sine again? Sine is the negative, is that true? Sine is the y-coordinate, so it's negative square root of 2 over 2. So you might already say to me, I already can tell you what the answer is. It's negative square root of 2 over 2 because I'm looking at the terminal point. Okay, good. You can say that's it, that's the answer, or you can answer what sine of positive 45 degree is. If you said, Mr. Judge, I don't want to use any arithmetic this morning on this, then look at the terminal point for the positive 45 degrees, right in there. And again, it's the y coordinate, which is square root of 2 over 2. So you can say, can I take 1 and just multiply it by the square root of 2 over 2? And I'll say, yes, you can, because what you guys are doing is using that property I showed you guys here. And so notice it's the same exact what? Answer. So you can rotate the negative angle in that way, or you can actually just use the property. Either way would be fine. Okay, anybody have any questions on that first one? Okay, is that kind of easy peasy, lemon squeezy, if you have that? That picture? All right. What about cosine of negative 30 now? Okay, I'm going to erase all the, the work we just did here. And now you say, okay, what about cosine of the negative angle? Well, cosine of negative 30 degrees is easier. Okay, cosine of negative 30 degrees is the same as cosine of what? 
30 degrees. Does anybody know why? Huh? What's the definition of cosine? Is it the x-coordinate? Right? It's the x-coordinate. So if you like, we could rotate 30 degrees here. Where would that put us? And I'll say a negative 30 degrees. Where, where would that put us on this unit circle? If I rotated negative 30. Isn't it at 330? On this unit circle, you may say why. So if I rotate here a negative angle, negative 30 degrees, we can say from this picture, 360 minus 30 is going to give us what? 330. Is that true? Right in here. So if it's the x-coordinate, what's the x-coordinate of the terminal point? Right? Your terminal point is here. What's your x-coordinate? Can you guys see that? Is that the square root of 3 over 2? So, okay. So this is the square root of 3 over 2. And there's your answer. Simply the x-coordinate. Or we can say we could have taken the, the ray and just rotated that positive 30 degrees. And the terminal point here is the same, has the same x-coordinate, square root of 3 over 2, right? Because here's the x-coordinate for the terminal point, here's the y-coordinate. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Square root of 3 over 2. So either, either way will work. The idea is that you really use your properties in some ways. It's a positive rotation. Okay, counterclockwise, but I want you guys to see this. Uh, picture is worth a thousand words. So on your test, what do you think you guys will be using? This picture. You, you think you could use the picture and read it? I hope. What's the next one we want to look at? Tangent minus 60? Tangent of a negative 60 degrees? Let's write that down. Tangent of negative 60 degrees. Now, you guys know that's the same as what? Negative tangent of what? 60 degrees. Is that true? So, we know if we just use the property, all we got to do is find what tangent of 60 is. Is that right? Multiply by a negative. So I'm going to try to copy that again. So I can keep it very simple. You can say, OK, let's just find what tangent of 60 is. Because we did that last week. That was easy. And, you know, I, you use that time to work on some homework. Anybody work on any homework? Okay, did I put solutions there for you guys? Because I can remember doing this stuff here. Oh, here's 60. Here's my terminal point. I want tangent. Is that right? You go, oh, what is, what's the definition of tangent? Here's the x-coordinate, here's the y-coordinate. Isn't it y over x? So we put the square root of 3 over 2 divided by what? 1 half, and then don't forget the negative sign. Is that true? All right, you guys okay with that? You guys see the point, how you can find tangent of negative 60? Just find tangent 60. Use that negative sign. If you rotated a negative 60, you think you'd get the same answer? Yes. Okay, now what do you guys do? Do you guys remember? What do you do here? Let's do some arithmetic. This is really, oh, 
think I wrote it at the wrong level. It's a complex fraction. We're going to write this division question. This is the vertical division. And we write it what? Horizontal, left to right. And what do you guys remember you do with that arithmetic, right? You multiply and you flip the second fraction over. And what do you guys notice? The tools cancel, don't they? So you get negative, square root of 3 divided by 1. What is anything divided by 1? That's right. So this is negative what? Square root of 3. There you guys go. And you're just using your circle. All right, what do you guys think? Is that easy peasy? This is just like what you did before. Anybody have any questions on that? You sure? Okay, let's get let's cut to the chase. Let's have you guys try this. Say, okay. Have you guys determine? We'll give you some time to write it down. Tangent of negative one hundred and twenty degrees sine of negative 240 degrees cosine of negative mm, 150 degrees for tangent of negative 300 degrees 5 sine of negative oh how about this 330 degrees, cosine of negative, let's look at the circle, how about 225 degrees? So I'll give you guys some time to write that down, and then I'll get that picture there for you guys. Okay, and you're going to use your what? Use your negative properties. Okay, give you guys some time to get these answers here. Let's get the clock out. Okay, clock. See what you guys get.
All right, there's audio now. So we're going to use these negative properties. Now remember, tangent of negative 120 is minus tangent 120. And then the definition here is going to be y over what? y over x, is that right? So I'm going to copy this, or at least bring it down. All right. So 120 degrees, we don't have to necessarily rotate our ray, but maybe you guys like that. Got to go tangent 120. Okay, and we get the terminal point, TP, and the X coordinate is what? Negative one half, and the Y coordinate is the square root of three over two. So square, square root of three over two divided by a negative one half. Okay. But don't forget, there was a negative sign outside to begin with. Is that true? All right, tangent of a negative 120. So I, I just want to remark what I would do is I would notice a negative times a negative will be what? Positive. Is that true? Two negatives? So you really have the square root of 3 over 2 now divided by 1 half. And now that's the square root of 3 over 2 times 1 half. We could cancel our 2's, and we have, again, the square root of 3 over 1, which would be simply what? Square root of 3. So this is going to be, ladies and gentlemen, equal to the square root of 3. And then that's all you got to do for number 1. Okay, was that easy peasy, lemon squeezy? Did you guys get the square root of 3 for number 1? All right, good. Anybody have any questions on this one? All right, good, easy. Sine of negative 240. Now, what do you guys know about sine? All right, don't you pull out the negative sign, and then that sign of positive 240 degrees? And the definition here, let's remember, you get to pull out the negative sign, and then sine of 240, what's that? Definition going to be? Is it the x or the y coordinate? I think it's the y coordinate. Is that true? So I just got to find that y coordinate. I'm going to copy this, bring it down to number two. Sine of negative 240 degrees. Okay. So, all right, now what I could do here is go back to the same picture, and I go to 240 degrees now. So we'll rotate to 240. 240 is down here, is that right? And I get my terminal point on that unit circle right here, TP. Am I looking for the X or the Y coordinate? Okay, what is the y coordinate? It's negative square root of 3 over 2. So I'm going to use the y coordinate, and it's negative what? Square root of 3 over 2. But don't forget, there's already a negative sign. Is that right? So what's minus that minus? Do you guys know? Minus the minus is simply what? Positive. So, ladies and gentlemen, you should have gotten. You get positive square root of 3 over 2 for number 2. What do you guys think? Is that okay? All right. What's cosine of a negative angle? Say with the properties we got used this morning, that's just cosine of what? positive 150 degrees, which is just your x-coordinate. So I just have to find cosine of what? Positive 150. And I'm thinking of just bringing down or copying all of it so I don't have to write it all over again. 
number three. So for number three, we're looking for, for what? Cosine 150, the x coordinate of the terminal point. So let's go to 150 now. And the x coordinate for 150. So 150 we rotate is over here. All right, we got 150. We got our terminal point right there. And we need the x coordinate. What's the x coordinate? Negative square root of 3 over 2. So your answer is going to be simply negative square root of 3 over 2. And we don't have to put a negative sign. There you go. Easy peasy, lemon wet. Squeezy. What do you guys think about number three? Not too bad? Number four. Let's, write, let's bring this down, number four. And let's remember, when it's tangent, what do we do? We get to pull out the what? The negative sign, and then we find tangent of positive 300 degrees. So we pull out the negative sign. We just need tangent 300, and then tangent's going to be, again, the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate. So we're going to focus here on the right side. So we just need tangent of that, what, 300 degrees. So, okay, so let's find it. And, you know, if you want to put the negative sign already down here so you don't forget, that might be okay. Is that right? Just to kind of give you a, a pointer, put the negative sign down there. Tangent of what? 300 degrees over here. Here's the terminal point. And since it's tangent, we need what? The x and y coordinate, right? The y coordinate is negative. The x coordinate is what? Positive, right? So you have negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by a positive 1 half. Okay. Negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by a positive 1 half. I would say to you again, what stands out to me is this minus the minus, which will make it a nice what? Plus. So I'll write down the horizontal definition of division. Flip the second fraction over and multiply. Don't you cancel? And you get the square root of 3 over 1 which is simply going to be what? So this answer is simply going to equal the square root of 3. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you guys okay with that? Is that easy peasy? Well, if you did your homework, you said, oh, okay, it's simple today. It's just like what, what you did. Only thing is, you got to know which functions do you pull out the negative sign. You do it for sine, and you do it for what? Tangent. Good job. You do it for those two. Cosine just stays the same. All right, so let's bring this down. And so now we just need to know what sine of what? 330 is. And I've got to remember the definition. Is that the x or y coordinate? It's the y coordinate. Is that right? For the sine 330. So let's go to sine 330 now. Or actually for the 330 degree. And rotate our ray counterclockwise. 330 is almost 360. We have the terminal point, 
and x and y, if I remember correctly, which one do we need? Which coordinate do we need? The x or the y coordinate? The y coordinate, what's the value? Negative one half, good. So we're gonna write down y is negative one half, but don't forget, you already had the what? Negative sign out there. So minus a minus makes that a nice what? Plus, so this equals what? One half, ladies and gentlemen, using that unit circle, it's one half. Okay, did you guys get one half? All right, let's see, what's number six? Cosine negative 225. Ah, what's nice about cosine? It's what? It's positive, is that right? So we just need the x coordinate for 225. And we went, okay, we'll go to 225 and get the x coordinate, and you're done. Two twenty-five. So rotate to two twenty-five. We find the x coordinate here. Okay. This is my terminal point. So for two twenty-five, the x coordinate is what? Negative square root of two over two. So your final answer is going to simply be the x coordinate, negative square root of two over two. Easy peasy, lemon what? Lemon squeezy. Is that right? Okay, now I'm going to give you guys a quick note here. What if they did this to you? Right? What if they said, okay, we want secant of negative 225 degrees? Okay, secant, well, let me write this down as reciprocals, okay? Let me give you guys a, a definition that you might have had, but I don't remember. You know, secant written as a reciprocal of cosine, we can write it as this, one over cosine. Is that true? You guys with me on that? And so, we know it's one over cosine. So if I said to you, that means secant of negative 225 is 1 over what? Cosine of negative 225. Is that true? Isn't that the same? So what I know here is that's going to be 1 over what? Cosine of 225. Is that true? We get the, the reciprocal definition here. So if I know cosine of 225, do I know that? Sure, I just got that right now in number 6. That's minus the square root of 2 over 2. So I get to write down 1 over, or 1 divided by, negative square root of 2 over what? 2. Because cosine of negative 225, which is the same as cosine of 225, is that negative square root of 2 over 2. So that means we divide here this complex fraction. 1 divided by that square root of 2 over 2. And we know we just have to do what? Flip the second fraction over and then we what? Multiply, is that true? Right, it's the reciprocal. So what did we do this weekend? Is that, what's a positive times a negative? So that's 
2, square root of 2, what do you do now with this? Multiply, rationalize the denominator, good. So we get negative 2, square root of 2, over 2, and the 2's cancel, and you have that minus square root of 2. So if you worked on some of those homework questions this weekend, you might have had some of these kind of things. So just to remind you guys, we can write secant as a reciprocal of cosine. And that's how you would get an answer there, too. Just like we can write cosecant. You say, well, what is cosecant? Cosecant of an angle is 1 over what? It's the reciprocal of sine. Is that true? And so... What that means, if I just highlight our definition, how we can use that, we said, what if I had cosecant of minus theta? Well, that's 1 over sine of what? Minus theta. Which is 1 over minus what? Sine theta, is that right? Now, I can even write it this way. If you know what sine theta is, isn't it the y-coordinate? So we say that's minus 1 over what? 1 over y, if we want to look at it that way. But you can keep it the way it is right here as well. Right? So if we notice, we might say, do we have a, a question like that? Well... Sine to negative 330. Okay, so let's note. Cosecant of negative what? 330. Again, we could write that as 1 over of the sine of negative 330 degrees. Right, which is 1 over that minus sign of 330, because we pull out the negative sign for sign. Now, did we ever get the answer for sine of negative 330? It's back here. It's really what? 1 half, right here. It's positive 1 half. So we can replace this here with a positive 1 half. So we say that's 1 divided by one half. Okay, one divided by the fraction one half. What do you do with the second fraction? Flip it over and multiply. And isn't that really just one times two? Which is gonna be what? Two. So you can find negative angles for those reciprocal functions. Right here? Uh, Let's give you guys a definition of cotangent. You guys know how we can write cotangent? Cotangent is the reciprocal of what? Tangent. So we can write cotangent as that reciprocal. So that can mean cotangent of negative theta, 1 over tangent of what? Negative theta, which is 1 over negative tangent of theta. And I can say maybe you want to just Stop right there, but if you wanted to go further with the algebra or create a formula, 1 over tangent is y over x. And we can say, oh, that's negative 1 
divided by y over x or negative 1 times x over y, you can end up with a negative what? x over y formula. If you wanted to go further, and I think even in my notes, that sheet I gave you guys, I went further for you guys. I have that, the coordinates, if you want to use coordinates. So if we looked at this and said, okay, have we ever done a tangent question? Sure, I think we have number here, six, five, four, tangent of a negative 300. They can ask you cotangent of a negative 300. So we'll put that as a note. We could just say, ah, I know, that's 1 over what? Tangent of the negative what? 300. And for tangent, we simply pull out the what? The negative sign. Is that right? So we did get this answer. Tangent negative 300, go back to tangent negative 300. Tangent negative 300 is what? Square root of 3. So that's 1 over the square root of what? 3. What do you guys remember you do here? Anybody remember? It was one last step. What do you guys have to do? Rationalize good, the denominator. So hopefully you guys had a nice weekend of rationalizing. So you get the square root of 3 over 3 now. So that's kind of just going over the, the, the ideas there that we had. Okay, so let me, let me give you that formula here. I don't think I did it for that first one. Cosine, you might say, isn't this 1 over x? It is just 1 over x for secant. So if you need a formula for secant, it's in, the, it's in the sheet I have there for you guys. It's 1 over x. So if you said, oh, is that where they came from? Now, do you guys know what kind of, what kind of um, functions are these, by the way? Do you guys know?